Hope TV family, what's up? Happy New Year. It's your boy, Dr. J.C. Howard, and you are officially locked in the Christ and culture with your boy. Listen, man, I miss y'all. It's been a minute since I've seen you all, but welcome to the year 2022 and welcome to the year of the rebuild. Listen, there are some things that were destroyed, some things that didn't work out these past two years, but in the year 2022, I believe God is rebuilding everything that was destroyed. Child of God, I want to share with you a sermon that I shared with our congregation on the first Sunday of this year, uh, a, a sermon titled, The Change Starts With Me. There's a lot of us at the beginning of the year, first month of the year, we have New Year resolutions, New Year goals, and we want things to change, change in our lives, we want things to change around us, but I can't expect things to change around me unless I first change myself. I want you to join us for this wonderful word, because I guarantee it's going to bless your life. I'll holla at you soon. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled. And he who humbles himself shall be exalted. Hope Nation, for the time that is ours to share on this first Sunday in the new year, if the spirit of the Lord shall guide, I like to preach from the sermon subject, the change starts with me. The change starts with me child of god it's a new year and we have much to shout about we have much to be thankful and grateful for because no matter what kind of obstacles no matter what kind of circumstances trials or tribulation that met you and that accosted you in the year 2021 the good news is you conquered another year that no matter what kind of valley seasons you walk through in 21 you were able to escape you were able to make it through you were able to conquer another year another year that you have been afforded to put under your belt to God be the glory for allowing us to have life, health, and strength in a new year that is filled with new blessings, that is filled with new opportunities. You ought to have an optimistic spirit. In fact, you ought to have a spirit of anticipation, child of God. You ought to anticipate that some new things are going to happen. Something new will happen in 22. You ought to anticipate that everything that burdened you in 21 is going to bless you in 22 you ought to have a spirit of anticipation and expectation that God is going to rebuild and reconstruct some great things in your life in this new year that ought to be your expectation that ought to be your anticipation you ought to be optimistic and positive thought oriented about what God is going to bestow upon your life in this this new year. But child of God, if we can be honest, 2020 and 21 were filled with many obstacles. It was filled with turmoil. Y'all saw that video we played during watch night. We have, as a congregation, as the kingdom of God, we have been relegated to worshiping online virtually. Churches have opened and closed, opened back up and closed again because of outbreaks of COVID-19 in their congregation I know we're tired of hearing about COVID-19 just like you're tired of hearing about the bills that you have to pay you're tired of hearing about the debt that you have to clear up you're tired of hearing about the job that you no longer desire to go to child of God these things we're tired of hearing about but we're still relegated to having to deal with it and the first thing I'm trying to show you here in this new year is that you can't just think because it's a new year that you can run away from your responsibilities and run away from some of the issues that were unresolved in 2021 yes indeed some things I had to leave in 21 some relationships had to stay in 21 some friendships had to stay in 21 some things that I put my hands to do that I know I wasn't supposed to do have to stay in 21 some things some addictions I need to be delivered from 
have to stay in 21 but if we're going to be honest there are some things that you just cannot run from some responsibilities that you just cannot run from and the word that I have to give to you is that you cannot run from your your problems because you'll run right into your problems you have to have enough courage and unmitigated gall to say God is before me and so nothing can be against me therefore I'm not scared of my issues I'm not intimidated by my problems but I'm going to face my problems head on because I'm going to introduce my problems to my problem solver you miss what I just said so I'll rewind it for just a moment I said I'm not going to run from my issues I'm not going to run from the problems that are still chasing me down from 21 to 22 I'm going to confront them head on because if God before me nothing can be against me therefore I'm going to introduce my problems to my problem solver can I find somebody in the sanctuary this morning and in the stream who said Howard you've already preached a whole sermon with that line I'm going to introduce my problems I'm going to introduce my issues I'm going to introduce my trials and tribulations to the one who I know is able to work it out if you believe it just do me one favor lift your hands throw your head back and shout hallelujah and so it is as we start this new year child of God it is full it's oftentimes accompanied with new goals and new ambitions we do something called new year resolutions where we tell ourselves I want to look more in shape this year I want to eat more healthy this year I want to save more money this year I want to buy a house this year I want to pay off my car this year I have gotta send my child to school this year I'm in that category child of God there are some things that all of us have planned goals and ambitions that we've laid out for our lives but the problem is we're looking for the change to happen from the outside in we're looking I need to find a trainer in order to get into shape or I need to find somebody to manage my money I I'm not good at managing my own money or I need to find somebody that can connect me with this job opportunity I need to find somebody that I can network with so that I can get my foot in the door see we look for the change to come from outside sources but the word that I've got to give you today is the word that Mahatma Gandhi gave to the Indians way back during the during the deliverance of India from British colonial rule what I'm trying to show you is and Mahatma Gandhi once said that you must be the change you wish to see I'm gonna say that one more time as I slow down a little bit here you must be the change that you wish to see and there's a lot of people in the kingdom of God they want some changes to happen in their life they want God to change some things in their financial situation change some things in my marriage change some things in my career change what uh, the trajectory that my child is on change some issues that's going on between my loved ones everybody's looking for the change but what I believe God is calling us to be is the change we can't spend all of our time looking for the change if we don't want to change ourselves I came to tell you baby that you can make all the resolutions you want you can have a goal to lose weight you can have a goal to eat healthier you can have a goal to save money you can have a goal for a new career you can have a goal to start a new business but what I've got to show you is that change has to start with you it starts with your will and your mindset I just said it a few moments ago and I'm gonna say it again you have to see it before you see it or you will never see it what kind of vision do you have for your life and how are you changing your behavior to align itself with the vision that God has given you see the problem is child of God we put a whole lot of stock in the mind as it pertains to the human phenomenon when it comes to the human phenomenon we put a lot of stock on the mind and on the spirit 
and on the heart, which are absolutely essential because the mind is the central database that controls your actions. Before you do it, you think it first, even if it's subconsciously. But nevertheless, child of God, I would contend that it's not the mind that is the greatest asset, but the greatest asset outside of your spirit, man, is the will. See, the will is what informs the mind. The will is what informs the mind to enact a certain kind of behavior and so before I can start eating healthy I have to will it for my life before I can start the new business I have to will it in faith before I can get the new opportunity I have to will it first before I drop 30 pounds I've got to have the will to want to get it done I can't just think because I show up to the gym January 3rd and January 7th in January 15th that I'm going to drop what I need to drop. I need to will it first, which means I must see myself accomplishing the goal. I must see myself accomplishing that which God has already shown me. And then when you have the will to do it, you will commit to doing it until doing it gets done. I just said something and I hope y'all feel this preaching word that I'm giving you right now. Did you hear what I said? I said the will is what in forms the mind and the will will suggest I can't just show up sporadically and think this is going to happen I've got to show up every day I've got to show up in the morning I've got to show up in the noonday I've got to show up in the evening and remind myself that it is possible and it shall get done because God is on my side and as long as I will the change as long as I'm ready to embody the change as long as I'm ready to be the change the change will become my reality give yourself a high five for the first time this Sunday and say self how are my power must feel good today he must feel like preaching today because he's all up in my avenue in my driveway you've got to will the change yourself you can't wait for any hand handouts you can't wait for your networking system you can't wait for a big baller shot caller to give you an opportunity because when you will it for yourself even if nobody creates an opportunity for you you will create an opportunity for yourself if if you believe it do me one favor lift your hands like this throw your head all the way back and shout hallelujah and so it is. The Bible declares cabinets. Mm -hmm, yes. The Bible says that Jesus now, uh huh, Jesus is in conversation with his disciples and he tells them a parable. He tells them about two men who show up to the temple to pray. One is a Pharisee. You know what a Pharisee is. One of those religious oligarchs in the Bible. One of those high to do church people who believe they knew everything about the law. And then there was also a tax collector and one thing you need to know about tax collectors in the biblical era in fact in this era that we live in right now tax collectors were demonized they were hated by the community not just because they collected taxes but they were taxing their own people not only that but they were oftentimes robbing their own people they would spike the percentages of the taxes give the government what was owed and pocket the rest and so tax collectors were looked to as thieves and as scoundrels they look they were looked at as some of the lowest occupation uh, one of the lowest occupations one could have and so now you have a Pharisee who is a church going holy roller but then you have a, a, a tax collector who is the bottom of the bottom he is considered scum to the rest of society and the Bible says that sh both of them show up to the temple to pray and the Pharisee begins to pray and he says God I am so grateful that you did not make me like other men I'm glad I'm not like the adulterers and the sinners and the extortioners. In fact, I'm glad I'm not even like that tax collector that's on the other end of the altar praying because I fast twice a week. I tithe off of everything I give. I am a faithful church-going man. That is why I am grateful, oh God. But the tax collector had a very different prayer. He couldn't even lift his eyes up to heaven. He couldn't even, he couldn't even pull himself together to look towards God he just kept his eyes low 
and he started beating his chest and he just said one line one line that revolutionized his life he said Lord I need you to have mercy on me for I am a sinner I love that child of God because the tax collector shows us something the first thing that the tax collector shows us is that righteous living starts with acknowledging wrongdoing Yep, yes it does. Uh, hey, this is a good first Sunday word for you. Righteous living starts with acknowledging wrongdoing. The reason why I'm impressed by this tax collector is because he gets up and he doesn't have any highfalutin prayers. He doesn't know any $5 mega words. He doesn't have a, a vast vocabulary. He doesn't know diction. He can't always articulate what he's feeling. But he comes, he shows up to the altar of mercy and he says, God, please have mercy on me for I am mm -hmm, a sinner. That word mercy that word mercy ought to be qualified here because mercy is when God stops something from happening that you deserve to happen to you. That is when God gets in the mix, when God intercedes for you and takes the consequences for you that you should have received yourself. Feel like preaching, is it all right? And what I'm trying to show you here, child of God, is that the beginning of your change, the beginning of your transformation, the beginning of your next level starts with acknowledging the wrongdoings you did yesterday. See, you can't be delivered from something unless you acknowledge that you're in it. You can't be delivered from something unless you first acknowledge that you have a grip on it to the pulling down of strongholds. A stronghold isn't something that is holding you strong. A stronghold is something that you're holding on to strongly and you don't want to let it go. You don't want to give it up. And God told me to tell you, child of God, that if you're going to start this new journey of rebuilding, of reconstruction, if you're going to walk in the anointing that God has placed over your life, you have to acknowledge where you're wrong. And that's why I appreciate this tax collector because he ain't show up trying to be highfalutin with God. He didn't show up trying to be something he wasn't. He didn't show up trying to be a holy roller. But he said, God, I need mercy because I know I'm a sinner. I know I messed up. I know I'm a cheat. I know that I'm a scoundrel. I know I rob my own people. And I'm showing up, God, because I don't want to live this way anymore. Please have mercy on me. And I came to find somebody in the cyber sanctuary who can be vulnerable today because every last one of us from the pulpit to the pew and from the pew to the porch every last one of us have something in our lives we know we need to be delivered from something we know needs to change something we know needs to be transformed and when I show up to pray I'm not just going to ask God God bless me because I've been faithful God bless me because I've been preaching God bless me because because I tithe and God bless me because I've sown seed. No, I'm going to show up and say, first, God, I need you to have mercy on me because there's some stuff in my life I'm still trying to get together. And I want to give you a shout today, not because I'm out of it, but because you covered me while I was in it. Give yourself a high five for the second time today and say, self, Howard is show enough preaching. There is something I need to be delivered from and I'll never be the delivered unless I confront what I need to be delivered from and unless I tell God God I need you to have mercy on me because I am not perfect but I'm doing my best you have to acknowledge the sin you have to acknowledge the separation those things that sep that's what sin is. You do know that's what sin is, right? Sin is separation from God. And, and anything that separates us from God is sin. And some of us have sinned upon the Lord. We have made idols out of money. We've made idols out of things and materialism. We've made idols out of people in our lives. We give people more love and affection. Mm -hmm. 
thing than we do God. I came to preach. I came to let somebody know that if you want to walk in the full rebuild, if you want to walk in the full purpose that God has designed for your life in 22, it starts with righteous living. And I can't live right unless I acknowledge what I do wrong. And that's why I love this tax collector. He says, God, be merciful to me. For I am a sinner. When is the last time you went to God in that kind of uh, in that kind of posture? When is the last time you opened up your prayer by saying, God, I'm not asking for anything yet. I need you to have grace and mercy on my life because there's some things that I continue to do that I don't want to do anymore and I need to be delivered. And so, God, I need you to have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. And mercy, watch this. Mercy is a request for God to deliver but also to cover you until deliverance comes. Righteous living starts with acknowledging my wrongdoing. And I, I, I want to change or I want to see something change. But what am I doing? What am I willing? To, am I willing to change? Am I, am I committed to the change? Am I sold out to the change? Change can't happen unless you commit to it. Gandhi said you must be the change you must walk in the change and there's a lot of people who have a lot of things to say about a lot of stuff the CDC needs to do this the school board needs to do this the church needs to do this the ministry needs to do that a lot of people want to see a lot of changes in a lot of other places but what about the change that ought to start in you uh uh, righteous living starts with acknowledging wrongdoing, but lest I hold you too long, child of God, I got to get back to the Pharisee because the Bible says, mm -hmm, yes, the Bible says the Pharisee's prayer is a lot different than the tax collector's prayer. Tax collector just said, God, be merciful. I need you to have mercy on me because I am messed up. I've got some things I need to clean up. There's some things trying to come with me in the 22, and I'm trying to leave it in the 21. I need to be delivered from some stuff but the tack but the Pharisee he shows up and he's a holy roller Zacharel he's highfalutin yes he is high society he is what the black community calls bourgeoisie mm -hmm, yes and I like that because it explains the difference between the tax collector and the Pharisee because the Pharisee shows up to pray at the temple just like the tax collector but the Pharisee says God I am so grateful mm -hmm, yes that that you have not made me like the rest of these peasants. I'm grateful that you have not made me like the rest of these individuals, for I am a holy man. I feel good. He says, I'm thankful that you have not that you have not uh, 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 created me like you created other men extortioners and uh, adulterers and sinners these men that do low down sinful things I'm grateful that you didn't create me in the way that you created them and then he says because I'm a tither I tithe off of everything that I have and I fast twice a week and uh, I am religiously in alignment with your word but here's what what the, here's what the Pharisee showed us, child of God. The Pharisee shows us that religious practice does not equate to authentic worship. Did you hear what I just said? I said religious practice does not equate to authentic worship. The Bible says Pharisee shows up and says I'm glad I ain't like the rest of these people around here. Uh huh. I'm glad I am not like these sinners. I'm not like these extortioners, these adulterers. I am a holy man. I uh huh. I am a tither, yes. And uh, not only do I tithe, but uh, I fast twice a week. I am a holy man. Oh, yes. And he shows us because Jesus goes on to let us know that it was the tax collector's prayer that was justified. It was the tax collector's prayer that God received. God didn't have any reception for the Pharisee because the Pharisee was more concerned about religious practice than about a sincere relationship. 
Y'all miss what I just said. I'm going to say it again because I know I'm preaching. I said the Pharisee was more concerned about religious practice than about an authentic relationship. And the problem with the kingdom of God, the issue with the Lord's church of the new millennium, is that we get so caught up on religious practice that we miss out on authentic relationship. And what I'm trying to preach to you in this first Sunday in the new year is that an authentic authentic relationship with God outweighs a religious practice every day of the week because there's some people y'all been talking about when we gonna get back to church and I want to get back to church I, I want to get back into worship you want to hurry up and get back into church but you don't even talk to God every day you want to hurry but hurry up and get back in here so you can buck and so you can dance and run circles around the church so you can run around here speaking in tongues but you ain't spoken tongues in the last 22 months something's wrong with that picture you want to get back in church and tell the church what it needs to be doing but you're not doing anything to cultivate your personal relationship with God something is wrong with that and I came to preach and let somebody know if you're going to catch this in the Holy Ghost that your little holy dance your little hand wave your little practices of religion yeah you tithe yeah you give yeah you do all of that and that's wonderful but it's only one Wonderful if your relationship with God is growing and developing God says I don't care anything about your dance I don't care anything about your giving I don't care anything about your little circus acts that you put up and try to offer me when in private spaces you give me nothing oh, there's a lot of public religious folk but privately your spirit is diminishing there's a lot of people who are churchy in public but privately mm -hmm, oh, okay all right and so it is I came to remind you that religious practice does not equate to authentic worship just because you know how to set up a communion table just because you take communion yourself just because you got baptized that still don't mean you get into heaven that still don't mean you get into glory the old folk used to put it like this there's a lot of people in church that's still going to hell show up to church every Sunday sing the songs of Zion but your private life doesn't match your public religiosity I feel like preaching today y'all might not like this but this is the way God told me to give it to you a lot of people are public charlatans because you are a religious demigod in public but privately God don't hear from you Religious practice does not equate to authentic worship. He, this, this Pharisee shows up and says, I'm the man because I'm not like these other sinners. I, 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 I don't go out and commit adultery. I don't extort money from my own people like this tax collector. Uh, 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 I'm different than everybody else. I, I, I fast twice a week. And, and I give a tithe of, a, of a everything that I have. Uh, 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 uh. But God says, Jesus says in the text, that the Pharisees' prayer was not, it was not justified. It was not accepted by God. And the reason why is because it came from a place of insincerity. He, did, he didn't recognize that there were still some things in his life that needed to be changed like that judgmental spirit and the Pharisee ain't the only one with the judgmental spirit I'll save that for another sermon for another day but I came to remind you child of God that you can't be trying to propagate something in public but you're not practicing it in private I am just here to let somebody in the cyber sanctuary know that just like this Pharisee some prayers are falling on deaf ears because we're praying out of sense of pride instead of praying out of a spirit of humility the Pharisee didn't realize even though he was doing well there's still something I can change there's still something that I can do better I leave you when I tell you this child of God that the change it starts with you it starts with me and I want to leave you when I tell you this that not only does righteous living start with acknowledging wrongdoing not only does religious practice 
not equate to authentic worship. But I bid you farewell on this first Sunday in the new year when I tell you, child of God, that you have to remember always that humility will lead to winning. That's it. That's all I have for you, child of God. I got to let you out of here. Uh, 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 but but humility, mm -hmm, yes. You need to remember always that humility is what leads to winning. A wise woman told me years ago, she said, JC, don't open doors for yourself. Let God open doors for you. That God prides himself. Thank you, Taylor. That God prides himself on being a cosmic gentleman, which means he loves opening doors for you. But some of us get pride for. We think that we're the dogs bow wow and the cats meow. We think we can do it all by ourselves. And so we start walking in pride. We start walking in arrogance. I came to let you know child of God, you might have something going on in your life that you could be arrogant about. But why be arrogant when you know it didn't happen by the volition of your own? That you didn't make this manifest by yourself. But the God that you served opened a door for you, made a way for you, opened an opportunity for you, gave you a blessing that you didn't even see coming. I came to preach to somebody to remind you that humility, it is the way. I feel like preaching now feel like giving God the glory I'm reminded of what Jesus says he says it here right in the text verse 14 Jesus reminds us that the prayer of the tax collector is the prayer that God honors because it was an authentic prayer it was a sincere prayer and it was a prayer of humility it was a prayer of deliverance the tax collector said Lord I know I'm a sinner I've got some things in my life that I need you to change and the change starts with me clean me up oh Lord wash me again make me over again because I need transformation I need to do something different I came to preach to somebody in the cyber sanctuary to let you know child of God that this is the year the year of the rebuild the year of reconstruction the year that God is about to do something new in 2020